Russian missile attacks have left energy infrastructure and the health system in tatters. Zelensky says so-called invincibility centres will provide people with a place to get heat, water, internet and pharmacy services around the clock. This as fears grow that under current conditions the winter could be life-threatening for millions of Ukrainians. It's zero degrees Celsius as night falls in Kherson and Irina's home plunges into darkness. Turning on the stove is the only way to keep the family warm. In the evening, when it's dark and cold, my daughter becomes nervous. She is used to light, but it's constantly dark now. Russia's missile attacks on Ukraine's power grids and other energy infrastructures means millions of Ukrainians will brave a harsh winter without proper heating. But that's not the only worry. The WHO says it has documented more than 700 attacks on health infrastructure since Russia's invasion began in late February. Hundreds of damaged hospitals lack basic facilities like water and power. And in their current state, the healthcare units cannot fully support the people. This winter will be life-threatening for millions of people in Ukraine. The devastating energy crisis, the deepening mental health emergency, constraints on humanitarian access and the risk of viral infections will make this winter a formidable test for the Ukraine health system. To ease pressure on energy resources, Authorities in Kherson are urging people to leave the region if they can. Local authorities in Zaporizhia in southeast Ukraine are reporting another attack on a hospital. I asked DW's Jan Philip Scholz, who's in Kyiv, for the latest. Yes, indeed, we are getting reports from local sources that a maternity ward of a local hospital in Saporizhia uh, was attacked overnight. We haven't been able to independently verify the information yet, but the regional uh, administration head is quoted saying that uh, a ward was attacked by a Russian missile and at least one newborn uh, baby was killed. Uh, of course, it has happened over and over during the war that medical facilities have become targets uh, too. And uh, the regional director of the World Health Organization said yesterday that several hundred uh, clinics and hospitals have been affected all over the country. Uh, of course, usually it's uh, not uh, direct missile or artillery fire, but uh, usually uh, the health facilities, uh, just like all other facilities, they suffer from the critical power situation. Bigger hospitals have uh, generator power, but this is not always the case for smaller places in rural areas. The, the head of Ukraine's national power grid operator said that the damage dealt to power generating facilities by Russian missile attacks was, quote, colossal. What are the authorities able to do about it? How can they manage the situation? It's, it's a huge problem uh, and the big problem is that now during uh, the winter season uh, people rely on electricity for heating. A lot of uh, solutions have been discussed in the past days. Uh, uh, more uh, energy saving is one solution but even evacuating cities and asking people to go abroad uh, uh, over the winter time uh, has been another option. The energy minister said there is no need uh, to, to panic and uh, the government is trying to set up these uh, new centers, what they call invis invincibility centers, uh, that will be available for people all over the country 24-7. Uh, uh, President Zelensky said that uh, these centers will not only provide free power and, and water, but they will also provide uh, internet services and even some basic medical services. All right, Jan Philip Scholz in Kyiv, thanks so much. Now, with winter approaching and many Ukrainian towns and cities facing power outages and energy shortages, as we just heard, Germany is expecting more refugees to arrive in the coming days and weeks. The capital, Berlin, has already taken in nearly 90,000 refugees from Ukraine 
this year. And now it's working on more accommodation, including huge temporary tent facilities at a former airport. One church community in Berlin has also stepped up to help. It was supposed to be emergency accommodation, but for around 30 Ukrainian refugees, this is home now. The community hall of the Marcus Congregation in Berlin. The church pays for the refugees' stay here. Finding a permanent apartment in Berlin is almost impossible. Anna Zhuravskaya and her eight-year-old daughter Anastasia found a room for a few months. Now they had to come back. They say the dormitory almost feels like home. Anna fled with her two children from Odessa back in March. I was so scared when people in Ukraine said, you need to leave, save your children. I was so scared to go to a foreign country where I don't know the language, the people, the mentality. But here we've been treated so warmly. The volunteers here have been so dedicated to helping the Ukrainian refugees that the church has employed some of them to sort through donations and groceries and help translate. Several are originally from Russia, but here it's support in hard times that counts rather than national boundaries. And the volunteers expect a tough winter. We have space for 80 people here, or for 100 in case of a crisis. I think we're ready. We will give our all to help these people and take them in, definitely. With winter setting in, Berlin's government is in a race against time, for example at this former airport. Currently, new arrivals from Ukraine register and live here temporarily before they can be moved on, within Berlin or to other German cities. Two heated tents at the old airport house 400 people each, but they're almost full. By the end of the year, the city plans to set up more permanent housing for an additional 10,000 refugees. Our goal is for people's stay in this temporary housing to be short, so that we can offer people a place to move on to. But at the moment, people have been arriving faster than we can create places for them. Back at the Marcus Church community, one Ukrainian family has been able to move into a permanent, separate apartment after months in a tiny room with two infants. Their mother, Yulia, is relieved, but feeling fully at home can be hard. Many of the family's relatives are still in Ukraine. We are living here in peace and quiet, in a warm, nice place, and they are there. We still feel like we are somehow in limbo. But I am trying to live in the current reality. I'm living here with the kids and I have to create a comfortable life for them. With the war dragging on and winter ahead, Yulia's family is lucky. Even now, hundreds of Ukrainians are stuck in arrival centers in Berlin, hoping for a more permanent home.